Hi right, guys, welcome back to Good for Modern Railway. Today we're going to show you slightly different. I do run quite a lot of Class 66 on Goodford Model Railway. Um, I've recently acquired this 66711, and so I'm going to talk you through the process uh, from start to finish of what we do. So we'll be fitting sound to it, we'll be painting some of the insides of the bogies, we'll be adding the illuminated models lights, we'll be updating some of the some of the CVs uh, to have um, the cab lights turn off when it moves. Um, we'll do some speed matching um, and just get it running as smooth and, and nice as possible. So uh, so let's go, let's jump in. So let's get into this box and see what sort of state it's in. Uh, I said, haven't opened this just yet. Um, often when you receive locos, they might have a few bits hanging off. So got the name place. Ah, yeah, so there's a Looks like a ladder and a bit of detailing hanging off. Some name plates, detailing parts, okay. So we can reattach them later and do detailing later. So let's pop that to one side for now. Right. So uh, first thing we need to do is get the body off. Uh, so there's four screws under there. Uh, so let's undo those quickly. Okay, get the body popped off. Can be a little bit stiff at times. Um, this one's extremely stiff. Go popped off both ends. Okay, so now the first thing we want to do is put the uh, DCC sound decoder in. Um, so for this one, I'm going to be using the standard issue Backman 21 pin uh, lock sound V5 uh, with SWD sound pool. Just take the I'll decode her out and pop the new one on. Done. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is fit the speaker. Uh, now I use these speakers, um, they're the 25 by 25 by 7 uh, mega bass speakers from Road and Rails. You can fit two of them into a uh, Batman Class 66, but I originally did that but found that actually it makes no real difference uh, you still get the same volume um, and it's better to play around with the CV so one speaker's plenty for that uh, so in this model we need to take out the old housing so let's just work that out quickly okay so there seems to be an old black tack in that one Okay, so we want to pop the speaker on this side because that's where the roof grill is, so the sound will emit through the roof grill. Uh, so you can see on this version of the Batman 66, uh, there's a speaker plus and speaker minus. Uh, so I'm just going to pop it in there rather than soldering it onto the uh, decoder itself. that in and pop the next one in okay so that on okay so that is the speaker attached we then need to attach it to the actual chassis. So for that, we use a bit of black tack. This stuff is fantastic. Uh, so I'll try not to put it on top of the um, screw for the bogey. Pop it down there. And then, there's 
some more. Pop it down. So we're going to try and make sure that all these wires don't foul the where that goes. Let's just pop a wire around to there, like that. Okay. So that is that bit done. So the next thing I want to do while I've got the body off is update the lighting. Now, uh, I only fit them on the driver end, certainly on uh, GBR F66s, because I generally only run them uh, with something behind them. Uh, I may do an update later on, which will show uh, independent um, lighting involved, but for, for the purpose of this video, we will just uh, do the leading end. So the first thing we need to do is pop off this little driver's card. In fact, let's remove the body so we don't scratch that. Oops. We don't scratch that. So pop that off. And then there's another little screw just in there. Bring that out. Okay. And then we pull the lighting board out like so, and then it comes out as the front bit. Now, illuminated models do a standard class 66 and a board for a 66 7. So, as this is 66 7 11, we're going to use the 66 7 board. So, the first thing to do now, I'm going to rush through this this is about the tenth thing i've done so um it's something that i've become quite accustomed to doing i'll just pop all of the uh wires off of the old board put that to one side the next thing i will do is just pop a blob of solder on each of the contacts on here to make it easier to solder on to. Okay, that's that done. Now, I believe the, so the way I normally set them up is to link the daytime running lights uh, with the normal lights. Now you can, I don't know if you can see that, so you can run night lights, day lights, um, mark lights, you could control all of these, some of these independently through the decoder functions. Um, I just run everything with the marker lights and daylights. So the first thing I do is connect G and E uh, together because uh, they'll be running at the same time. So we just need to get ourselves a little bit of wire to connect the two together. fingers okay sorry just pop that into the bin Oops. now I want to add a little bit of solder to the ends of these it's easier to put on the board Um, so, as I said, we need to connect G and E together. So, G and E. And then the next thing to do is connect the rest of the wires. So on this diagram here, we can see the top one is negative white lights. So let's out of the way. Move that in there. So 
and sub one is negative white all combination. So on this PCB, and they don't put the wire colours on there, which I think is a great idea because it then means that you don't, um, there's no confusion between different locos because I have come across some locos that have got different colours on. So negative white light uh, we want on G and E, and that's the top one. So that's the one we've just done. So I'll pop that onto E there. I don't know how I can do this without blocking the camera, but. To e. Okay, so the next one down is not used, so that's the yellow one. So I normally just uh, snip the end off of that. Trusty track cutters. Don't get too much off so I can still use it if I need to in the future. Uh, so the next wire down is positive white, which on this one is an orange. Um, positive white on this PCB is C. So let me pop that onto C. Okay, the next one down is negative red, which is red. And negative red on here is F. That onto F. Okay. And the last one, positive red. Oh. Done that wrong, that should have been B. Just peel it off. It's quite easy to get them the wrong way around. I don't think you do any damage if you get them the wrong way around. I think it just doesn't work, to be fair. Um, so we're going to try and get it right the first time. Right. So now that's all soldered up, I'll take a little jig out of the way and pop it back into here. Fold that away. Do the little locator screw. Come there. And pop that on. So that should all now be done. Um, make these wires a little bit neater. There. Right, and that's done. The next thing I like to do uh, is only have the leading cab light working. So the very simple quick fix for that is to cover up the LED on the trailing one. To do that, I just simply so that will be leading, that will be trailing, so I'll simply do an electrical tape and I'll just pop it over the LED on the trailing end. Now this is obviously the way I run my locos and trains, you could have that controlled independently, um, that's just the way I like to do it. These back in. Oh. That's always good to check. Um, these wires look all right. It's quite common for these wires to foul and get in front of where the screw holes are, four screw holes. So it looks like these are going to be all right, but you could put some tape over them. Um, but in this case, we'll just pop it down. It should go. Click. That's it. Uh, screw it back on quickly. Right. 
So the way I program locos is uh, through the lock programmer, which is a little bit of kit, which I think is about 100 to 150 pounds, depending on where you get it from. Um, and you know what? It's actually been a complete godsend having it because it got to a point where I was trying to keep notes and references of, of all these things that I'd updated and changed and, and had all these printouts. And I think actually it come to a point where it was a lot easier just to have it all sat in front of you. I use the uh, Zumo um, YouTube's tweak and drive software as well uh, for Zumo decoders. That's equally as good. Uh, but this is a lock sound decoder, so we're going to use the lock programmer. So on the lock programmer, uh, you've got all these different functions down the side. I'm not going to go through a tutorial of how to use it. Uh, we'll save that for another day. I'm sure there's a lot of other tutorials out there. So for the um, cab light, we only want that to come on uh, when the loco is stationary. We don't want it to be moving. So quite a simple update I've done. So just so you're aware, I, I have a sort of standard profile for 66 um, SWD chips that I've sort of tweaked over, over time. Um, so when I get a new one, I just load this on uh, and this is saved for each one. So all the changes I've made are already gonna be on the display here. So the, the first one I've done is this. So F13 is the cab light, which is AUX1. So you just simply do the little drop down there and you say that you want it to be driving no so when that's done then that means that's on stop so that means as soon as the loco moves that cab light will turn out uh, so it's quite as simple as that the other primary things that i've done um, on the profile for the class 66 is to do with the sound so after playing around with it a little bit, something I did notice on the SWD chip versus uh, Lego Man Biffo chips, for example, is the horns weren't particularly loud. Uh, so the way I've got around this is, and I know the speaker can take it, I put the master volume up as high as it would go to 150%. So you can see that on here. Uh, and then I've looked at each sound slot and dropped it down. So sound slot one, if memory serves correct, is the main driving volume. So that's actually dropped down to 43%. So actually, if you were to have, for example, uh, master sound on 100%, then this, uh, rather than 150%, then I've got the volume set at roughly, I don't know, 60 or 70% of, of, of that for the, uh, for the driving volume. And then I think it slots three and... Four, I've got them up at 200% or close to 200% as they'll go. So three and four are the horns. Uh, so essentially I've just gone through each sound slot. You can see what it actually maps to on your function mapping tab. Um, you can see which function that sound slot refers to. Um, and it's worthwhile doing if you've got a lot of the same sounds, a lot of the same chips go through them. I've done some there's a couple of other bits that we do with the lot program software. So the first one is set up the random sounds. So on 66, I just have three random sounds, uh, the two horns and the AWS ramp. So one of the horns, we've got that set up to come on. Uh, so the function will be pressed between one and two seconds. Two seconds actually feels like quite a long time for the horn to be pressed when it's, when it's working and that will happen. Um, between 60 seconds and 100 seconds. Uh, we've got the other horn, uh, that's the same between one and two seconds it's pressed for, that will happen between 80 and 120 seconds. The last thing is the F16, which is the AWS ramp, um, and that will happen uh, between 40 and 80 seconds. So when you think one circuit is around um, <clears throat> normally takes about a minute, uh, 30 miles an hour is one and a half minutes to get round. Uh, so just to give you an idea of how I've set up the functions, I think on some other locals that have it between uh, sort of 40 and, and 200 seconds, so it's not, not going off all the time, uh, just to give you an idea. Uh, and the only other thing we have to adjust on here is the, the address, and then we lock it down and save it as its own profile. Um, so the next thing to do is to set up the uh, speed. 
so that the top speed on the um, Rocco Z21 matches up with the top speed of the Loco. So that's 75 miles an hour uh, for this class 66. So this is the Rocco Z21 software. Um, you can see uh, we've got all our Locos down the side here. Now, all I want to do is add on this uh, new Loco. So I'll take one of my existing 66s, which I know um, has got the same decoder in, uh, and I'll just scroll down to duplicate, and then we've got a duplicate one, so we've got two there. So then I can go into it and change all the uh, the picture and things like that. Um, so yeah, and then you uh, set the max speed there, 75. So let's give this a an address of, I know that I don't use anything under 10, so let's use it for nine for this demo. Um, cancel that, so I know I need to put nine into there. And the uh, box sound, change the number of it. Uh, and then we'll change the image. So I have an album with all the local images in there. Uh, so we'll just select that one, so that's what it is. And that's it, it's, it's now added to the, uh, to the software. Now we can see our loco in the software, all the functions I've set up previously, I won't go into how you, how you set all these up on the Rocco Z21. Um, there's plenty of tutorials online, I suspect. Uh, I'm happy to do it if, if anyone's got any questions, but um, yeah. So the way I, I use this is by the speeds and miles per hour. Now, uh, a lot of people like to use a DCC controller as this here being the throttle. And therefore, if you put a lot of throttle in, then you might not get a certain speed. I like to have a, a flat speed curve, straight speed curve, linear one, however you want to call it. Um, so that when I hit, say, 30 miles an hour on here and I just leave a train running round, I know it's going at that scale speed. Um, again, different different ways of people doing different things. So this has been set up, so the maximum speed is 75 miles an hour. So now what we need to do is put the local on the layout, get it running around at maximum speed, uh, and change the, um, the top speed on the loco, the CV for that, to 75 miles an hour, so that it all matches up. And because it's linear, then in theory, and then yet to be proven otherwise in theory if i hit 30 miles an hour then uh, it will do 30 miles an hour um, so let's give what it we've got here is a very simple breakdown of speed and time for a specific circle circuit round goodford model railway and so i know looking at this if it takes 47.35 seconds to go around the circuit then it's going 60 miles an hour scale speed um Yep, simple as that. So we're going to use that to to match the speed um, of the loco, the top speed, to the real loco's top speed. So I believe that loco uh, 66711's top speed is 75 mile an hour. So we want to try and aim to get the top speed down to 37.88 uh, seconds, as close as. The decoder is currently set with the top speed or top CV. So CV5 is currently 254. So we're going to do a full circuit with that uh, and then work our way down from there uh, to try and get to the total time for one lap uh, as being as close as possible to 37.88 seconds. Uh, and then we know it'd be going at 75 miles an hour. So just coming up to the first lap. So that is going to be 33.84 seconds. So we just need to tweak it down slightly. So after a little bit of experimenting, um, I think the top speed, so CV5 needs to be at 226. Uh, and we've dropped down CV6 down to 113, so CV6 is your midpoint on the speed curve. Uh, and hopefully that will land on as close to 37.88 as we can get it. Uh, and 
and then after that we'll just test the um, 30 miles an hour for example yeah, so we're just coming up now yeah that's as close as I think as we're going to get it um, any more than that and you'll move it too far away and I'm still not that accurate so that's good enough for me so we'll just start the uh, process of testing 30 miles an hour uh, I won't make you sit through a minute and a half of it going round uh, so I'll see at the finish line just come up to the finish line now and 131.7 it needed to be 134 um, I don't think there's a great deal I can do about that uh, but to give you an idea that's probably running at about 31 miles an hour um, so that's close enough for me I think when it comes to uh, running that top and tail I've done a head of them up at loco as long as they're hitting roughly the same speed um, then they should run quite well in sync together um, okay so the next bit that we want to do is the cosmetic bit so we're going to add the detailing and the name plate so let's open up the detailing pack into there now, I only put detailing on the leading end, uh, and in this pack we've got snow plows and a couple of pipes. So, the snow plow, see there, it, if you fit it normally, it will catch on the NEM pocket. So, there's two things you can do. You can either cut down the NEM pocket to make it slightly smaller, what I found is if you cut off these two tabs there, then that works just as well. Uh, so I'm getting to the end of my super glue on this tab. Um, good trick, use a cocktail stick um, to save dabbing loads, loads on. Just get you look at the end of your cocktail stick, uh, put it on the outside. The inside, should I say, so it doesn't appear punctual. Go for it and then just pop that down there. There we go. And that's the snow plow fitted. Just make sure that it clears the NEM pocket. There we go. Make sure it clears the NEM pocket. Uh, looks like the previous owner has already fitted the uh, coupling, so we'll just pop it the other way around so you can see what we're doing. Uh, and the next thing we'll do is cut these little pipes, dab a super glue on there, trusty tweezers. In. And the last one, and super glue. And then just slot it in there. Oops. it all up Same down there we go so that's the detailing added so the next thing we need to do is the nameplates you can see there I've got a uh, an image in front of me of the real thing so we'll just cut them off the screw I'll turn the light off on the bench so you can to the iPad a bit better because it was getting a bit of glare off there. So just cut them off there. And the edges we're trying to cut down. Okay. So let's have a look to see where it is. So we've got that side 
that appears to be on the bottom line of there and in line with the E. Okay, so let's give that a go. Uh, so just a tiny tap of super glue on the back of that. Uh, because the body side itself is uh, corrugated, then it doesn't matter if you've got a little bit too much on there. If you've got a completely smooth side, then you need to be quite careful. don't know, I'm not particularly 100% precious about it being millimetre perfect, but at the same time, I do like it to be straight. So I think that's in the right place. Apply a little bit of pressure. Okay. So I think that might just go up slightly. Just going to add the other nameplate on the other side uh, and the couple of detailing bits that came off in the box. So it's just a ladder and a bit of detailing from one of the bogies. Uh, so I'll do that off camera quickly. The final thing we're going to do is also cosmetic. Now, in the you might not be able to see on here, but inside the bogies, there's the pickups which are copper strips and I think it's quite obvious sometimes that they're there uh, and also on this side you can see the red wire hanging down uh, so we're just going to paint them now you can do it when you've got the body off and remove the bogies uh, I think I've just about perfected uh, doing it with the body still on uh, so I use home roll uh, mat 33 to do it I think this paint's enough I need to get some more so it's quite straightforward on the bottom of the brush and then I normally just slide in through that gap and just do a smattering and then there you obviously need to be very careful that you don't get it A on the body and B on the actual contacts with the wheels. Uh, so that's that one done. It's quite straightforward. Uh, there's Another coffee to be seen. I'll just do this one quickly as well. Just sitting through the gap. Get as much of the wire as you can see. Much of that. I think that's the loco finish now. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is click the little switch underneath to off. Uh, so that will turn off the trading lights because we're going to run it around with the train. Uh, but yeah, cosmetically it's finished. The sound is fitted. Um, all detailing parts have been added. Uh, so yeah, let's let's run some trains. <laughs> 